Hello, we are broadcasted from in the basement at an undisclosed location. This video discusses horrifying real events. We will return to our regular programming at a later date. Viewer discretion is advised. I would like to take you to a moment of time. One moment of time where a decision had to be made. This moment haunts me, and by the end of this video, it will haunt you too. One moment in time, for by time, man is at a loss. In 1978, in the Peruvian jungles, an indigenous group caught a man who was a rapist and a murderer of young girls. He was a monster, and this tribe, enraged by his molestation and murder of his little girls, began beating him to a pulp. They buried him up to his neck and were going to kill him, when a Christian missionary pleaded for them not to. Try to imagine that conversation, that back and forth, the grief, the wanton of vengeance, revenge. Picture the mothers and the fathers, the families, their bloodlust. Picture the blind rage. Picture the amount of pressure that this Christian missionary was under. I mean, this man murdered and raped their children. And she was asking them to have mercy on him, to hand him over to the authorities. What followed was beyond tragic. This tribe in the Peruvian jungles showed heroic restraint. She told them that she was going to deliver him to the authorities. She told them that he would no longer be an issue once he was apprehended. She told him all of these things, and all of these things turned out to be a lie. For she took him to the Colombian and Ecuadorian border and released him, telling him to flee for his life. What she didn't know about this man, Pedro Alfonso Lopez, is that he had already killed 100 little girls. He raped, strangled, and dumped their tiny bodies into shallow graves. The devil in the jungle, this devil quickly slipped into neighboring Ecuador where the authorities find more of his increasingly barbaric work. In April 1980, flood exposed the bodies of four murdered children in Embato, Ecuador. The Ecuadorian authorities realized there was a serial murderer at large. Days later, Lopez attempted to abduct 12-year-old Maria Poveda from a marketplace but failed when her mother caught him in the act with the help of other women. He was almost lynched on the spot. Lopez was rescued by police officers and arrested while proclaiming that he was a good person and that he had a clean heart. While in detention, Lopez was subjected to a standard interrogation until he told the policeman that he was not Ecuadorian but a Colombian drifter. A police lieutenant then beat him and accused him of being part of a gang abducting girls from Mbato. The officer threatened to kill him if he didn't confess, but Lopez remained silent. In that moment, the officer's superior, Captain Pastor Cordova, entered the room and told all the policemen to leave, decided to interrogate the suspect himself with a more friendly approach. He offered Lopez food and cigarettes and asked him about his health and feelings before requesting information about the gang of abductors. Lopez shrugged and said that he knew nothing about that. When the captain told him, that he was under great pressure from the families of the missing girls to find whoever abducted them, Lopez told him that he could find one victim in a cabin outside of town. The police went to the cabin and found that poor unfortunate, who was identified as Ivanova Jacome, a missing girl. After Cordova asked Lopez how many girls he had killed, Lopez looked upwards and said, over 200 in Ecuador some tens in Peru and many more in Colombia. The president of Ecuador was informed and he ordered that Lopez should be taken to the place where he had left the bodies until all of the victims were uncovered. Lopez led police to more than 30 shallow graves, but after learning that he was going to be charged for murder, he stopped cooperating and declared his innocence. A total of 53 bodies were uncovered in Embato alone. Even though many graves had been emptied by flash floods or scavenging animals before the investigators could find them, Lopez's minimum body count is estimated at 110, but some believe that the number is in the vicinity of 300 or more. On August 31, 1994, Lopez was released from prison on good behavior. An hour later, he was arrested as an illegal immigrant and deported to Colombia. Still reluctant to set him free, the authorities moved Lopez to El Espinal. 
where he had resided decades earlier with his mother, in hopes that one of his older victims would come forward. A local woman named Alba Sanchez claimed that in 1979, she had seen Lopez walk away with her daughter, Floralba, before Floralba's body was raped and strangled outside town. This M.O. was identical to Lopez's known murders in Ecuador. Lopez was found guilty after a short trial, but his defense attorney demanded that he should be subjected to a psychiatric evaluation first. He was ruled insane in 1995, and as a result, he was committed to a mental hospital instead of being sent to prison. In 1998, a new evaluation deemed him sane, and he was released on $50 bail and reported himself to police every month. However, he didn't either. The news of Lopez's release caused hysteria in Ecuador. It was rumored that he had been seen in the northern part of the country around this time. Lopez was next seen in El Espinal, where he knocked on his own mother's door, Benilda. The impoverished woman admitted that she thought he was going to kill her because he had blamed her for every pain in his heart. In a televised interview earlier that year, she had pleaded in turn for Lopez to never be released. However, Lopez calmly told her to get on her knees because he wanted to give her blessings. Afterwards, he demanded his inheritance in life, arguing that he had no means to sustain himself. His mother gave him a few bills that she kept in a drawer and an old bed that Lopez took apart to sell for pieces. She never saw him again, and his current whereabouts are unknown. In 2002, the Colombian police launched an Interpol order of arrest against Lopez for a new murder in El Espinal that fit the M.O. of his earlier crimes. Different rumors claim that he is living in Tolima Department, Colombia, as a homeless man in Bogato, or even that he was murdered after some relatives of his victims put a bounty on his head. He is presumably still at large. Although, whether or not he was or will start killing again or his current whereabouts are unknown. Why did I tell you this entire story? What did you gain? Why did I poison your mind with tales of barbarousness in times long past, relatively? My question is to all of those who are against the death penalty. In this case of one Pedro Alfonso Lopez. My question is, if you were in that jungle, if you were that missionary, if you were that God-fearing woman who saw this man buried up to his neck in sand and dirt, after being tortured and beaten by the tribe whom he murdered their children, if you knew for a certainty that this would have happened after his release, that hundreds of lives would have been taken, hundreds of the children, innocent, beautiful, gorgeous, sweet, happy children, Little girls with their entire lives ahead of them. Little girls under the Amazonian sun living. If you knew that this monster would seek them out, would find them, would corner them, would lure them, would offer them things and their innocent minds would think nothing of it. If you knew afterwards what he would do to them, that he would defile them, that he would strangle them, that he would bury them in grave. My question is if you were that missionary, would you pour that syrup? and those ants on him yourself and give him the death penalty.